Thank you. So, first of all, hats off to the Gromit. Uh, you know, I, I started a lot of the entrepreneurial activities at MIT a number of years ago, and I wish this existed back when I started the technology licensing office. Uh, the I implication of one product a day is just my wonderful, uh, fantastic. And uh, thank you, uh, Google, also for inviting me. I think this is a great thing that you're doing. So um, my background, as you heard, is, is 30 years at MIT. I started a lot of the entrepreneurship programs, uh, like the 100K competition, the Entrepreneurship Center. But one of the things I realized is that there, is, you know, having been involved in creating 300 companies for the, out of the two inventions a day that come out of MIT, is that there, there is a hole in our capital structures related to energy and materials. So I started a fund called Transformative Energy and Materials, or TEM Capital, and we've been looking for, um, for things that can make a big difference. And um, I'm going to talk to you about one that I liked so much that I became the CEO of it, and I'm helping to build this uh, business, and it relates to cement. Now, most people don't realize that cement is the largest man-made commodity. It accounts for 8% of the global pollution, air pollution, so it's equal to half the automobiles on the road or roughly half a billion cars create the same pollution as the cement industry. And it's, it's undergone very little innovation over the last 2,000 years. So what we, what we did was we figured out a way to um, make cement stronger, to make it more durable, uh, to uh, eliminate, uh, this, this slide got gronked a little bit, sorry about that, uh, that, that bullet is in the wrong place. Um, must be a difference between computers, but uh, at any rate, we, we figured out a method to, to take pozzolanic materials. Pozzolanic materials are what cement was originally made out of 2,000 years ago. What built Rome and Athens was volcanic fly ash, and what we figured out was how do you take volcanic ash and uh, mill it and chemically treat it in a way where it can set as quickly as Portland cement. So over the last 200 years in the, in the planet, we've used a material called Portland cement, which uh, is calcium carbonate, which is uh, ground down to very small uh, dimensions and heated to about uh, 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the heating process, we use a lot of, uh, we generate a lot of carbon dioxide emission, but we also generate it chemically. So what we did was we went backwards and we said, all right, 2,000 years ago, the Romans had a great cement. What was wrong with it? The big thing that's wrong with the cement that uh, the earth had 2,000 years ago is it sets too slowly. People want to pour cement and work on it the next day. So what we figured out was there's a way of, of re-engineering that material so that it can set as quickly in one day as, um, uh, as Portland cement. So our innovation is really how do we engineer a, a well-known, well-established cementitious material and make it better than today's uh, material. So the, the key attributes that we bring are 40% lower cost of production, uh, about 80% lower capital cost to build the plant. It's 30% stronger than Portland cement. It's basically near zero uh, carbon emission. The only emission we have is the electricity that, gen that comes into our plant. Um, we're currently using it at a 60% uh, replacement factor for cement. So worded differently, cement is an additive to our product. Uh, we've made up to 100% with our material, but we're not yet permitted to sell it above 60%. And I'll, I'll explain the reg regulatory side of concrete in, in a few minutes. Uh, we've now built over uh, 700 miles of interstate highway using our material. We won all three of the runway projects in Houston recently at, at Hobby and, and at uh, Bush Inter International Airport. Uh, we're approved by the Department of Transportation, the F 
Federal Aviation Administration. Our first plant is in Texas, which is why the Texas Department of Transportation is uh, critical to us. And we have a strong intellectual property position. Um, there's another key aspect to this, though, which is one of the major sources of ground pollution in, in the United States is our power industry. So if you look at every, every coal-fired power plant, uh, the big ones are generating up to a million tons of what's called fly ash each year. Turns out that fly ash works as well as volcanic ash as an input material for, for our product. In fact, it's even better because it's cheap. It's, we don't have to go mine it. So what we've been doing is we've been building, uh, we built our first plant at the back end of one of the biggest coal-fired power plants where we're taking their fly ash and instead of it going into the ground becoming a contaminant, we're using it to make cement. Now, I don't know if any of you saw 60 Minutes two, two weeks ago, but they did a story on Duke Power where they showed uh, Duke Power had a fly ash spill. Five years ago, they had a, a fly ash spill at uh, Tennessee Valley Authority uh, that made 60 Minutes also. These are major pollution issues. So what we can do is now take that material and we can convert it into a product that is safer to use and leaches less than normal Portland cement. And we can also dig up the, the material that's already in the ground and reverse mine it and convert it into uh, a cementitious material. Now the, the, the US is producing 70 million tons of fly ash per year. Uh, the total uh, cement consumption in the United States is, um, is about 100 million tons. So we can, we can take that material and convert it into uh, a great cementitious material. This shows cement construction, uh, con consumption growing in the United States, um, imports growing because the environmental regulations are making cement uh, more difficult to produce in the United States because of this heavy CO2 emission. Many of the older plants are being shut down. Our imports are increasing. When you import cement from China, you're not really doing anything on the global a greenhouse gas, in fact, you're making it worse because of the cost of importing. Uh, this is what a typical cement plant looks like. This is half, half a million tons per year, costs $200 million to build that. Uh, the plant I showed you in the very first slide had these little uh, motorized uh, systems that weigh about 15 tons from, from that wall to about here. And, uh, and the only thing we use to run those is a 100 horsepower motor. Uh, this is the... Uh, Strength of our material shows that 50-50 you know, mixture with Portland cement is 28% is stronger in 56 days. Uh, we, we're making products that are significantly better than that. This one's twice as strong in, in 56 days. And uh, we've used it, uh, as I told you, everywhere in Texas. This, this uh, using the fly ash from coal-fired power plants, we in essence get a a 3.5% reduction in the total global, the emission of that power plant by offsetting the pollution that would have occurred uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, cement. And to put it in perspective, it's, about, it's larger than all the solar and wind combined in the US. And we're ramping up uh, very rapidly right now. This is where the US power plants are located. And uh, this is a, basically the conclusion so we're eliminating pollution. Uh, we're, you know, this is the largest man-made commodity in the world. And uh, we eliminate the fly ash pollution at power plants. And uh, we're going globally. Thank so thank you very much. Great talk. And cement definitely sounds, you know, moonshot worthy. There's a lot thank of it. You. Um, tell us about mining the fly ash. Are you mining at the lip of a volcano? Where does it uh, uh, come from when it doesn't come from Duke Energy? Well, it turns out that the, the coal-fired industry has created uh, huge mines. So there, I told you that we use about 100 million tons of cement per year. There are several billion tons right, right at the power plants stored in the ground. So we can go and dig it up and just uh, convert it into cement. Now right now, because we're only doing uh, about a, last year we did about 100,000 tons per year. This year we're going to be doing about 250,000 tons. We're just taking it right out of the, the tailpipe, if you will, of the power plant is blowing it into our input silo. And so we don't have to mine it at all. And it's already dry and in a good, good state for us to just put it in our process. 
Um, can you speak a little bit about where you see coal going in this country? Because this is it's a great idea, but it's all predicated upon coal generated electricity, electricity generated from coal. But there is a large trend of natural gas cogeneration in this country yeah. with all of the shale gas. So over the last 15 years, coal has gone from 51% of US energy production to 42%. I think it will go down to uh, low 30s within the next 15 years. I think that it's actually a good trend for the world to, to reduce de demand of, of coal-fired power plants. Uh, so we're anticipating uh, actually mining more material. Um, companies like Duke, we, we think, would actually pay us to to take their material, whereas right now we're paying a small amount uh, for the privilege of taking it. And you know, the U.S. It turns out to be only about 5% uh, uh, of global cement demand and, and a small player even in the coal-fired power plants. We are working in India, we're working in China to, to replicate what we're doing here in the U.S. where you know, coal is, is still being used quite aggressively. But you know, the good news is there's far, far, far more volcanic ash than there is uh, uh, fly ash from coal-fired power plants. Even places um, well, like the border of uh, Abu Dhabi and Oman, you'd never think there would be volcanic ash there or volcanic ash in Saudi Arabia. It's everywhere. It's in Alabama because uh, we, we can go back and, and look at volcanoes that occurred 300 million years ago. And so that, that's our long-term goal is to just use natural uh, pozzolanic material. Go back to Mount Etna. <laughs> Seems like a lot of work has gone into VHSC already. Uh, I'm curious about what are, what is the next level that you dream for it, for the company, and um, what are the challenges in achieving those? Well, right now, I'm, I'm actually negotiating with three of the five largest coal-fired power plants in the U.S., power owners in the U.S. for coal-fired power plants. And we're looking at putting this on the back end of every one of the coal-fired power plants. So the idea is they would no longer produce any fly ash emission. They would produce a product. And the fly ash emission, when they bury it, costs them maybe $10 to $15 a ton if they do it safely. Duke is going to spend $10 billion on cleaning up the spill. So if they do it unsafely, the cost is much higher. So if, if we can take something that has a negative $10 a ton value and replace something that currently costs $110, called Portland cement per ton, that's a big swing. And it costs us about $25 a ton to, to make that swing. So right now we're selling at $55 a ton, uh, where Portland cement is $108. So we're creating a strong economic driver because it's a new technology we'll, we want to build customers. What about... Uh impurities and pollutants in the ash that you have. Yes, okay, so the, um, the ash varies in, in com chemical composition from coal mine to coal mine. So most of, the, uh, most of the coal in the United States right now, or a big part of it is coming from Wyoming, Powder River Basin coal. You still have Illinois and you still have Appalachian coal and you still have lignite. And it turns out that uh, the way we handle it is we, we do a chemical analysis for every power plant. The power plant actually is very stable. Once they pick their coal type, they'll stay there for 30 years with that, with that coal mine. So when we do the analysis, we, can, we have a chemical package that balances it out so that the quality is the same on our product no matter where it is. And we've done power plants all around the world. We've done Korea, China, India, Philippines, Guatemala, Colombia, and we're able to, to make the exact same product every time. And it's critical because people who pour cement have to have the same product every time. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.